Now, everybody in this place, in this world, has a purpose. Whether it be cooking food or talking to somebody to help them through a problem or fixing their car, every single person has their own reasoning for being here. And if mine's to make somebody's stomach feel good and make them feel good about themselves, that's the main thing, to make sure everybody's happy. oak sometimes there's hickory mixed in uh, this is the main part of the fire when you build it every morning you have to build a bridge if you don't build the bridge proper the, the wood won't burn proper and the meat won't cook proper so I've been burned plenty of times I don't think I have fingertips anymore to be honest with you Fire is very important. Winter, summer, fall, all those seasons make a big difference. If you got really green wood, it's gonna take longer to start. If you have dry wood, it's gonna start instantly. Hickory burns dark. Oak wood burns hot. Uh, round logs burn heat. Cut logs burn flame. So there's a bunch of different terminology with wood and everything that goes along with it. It's not just throwing some wood on the fire and flipping some meat. I said, I've got bad shoulders because I flip this meat and do this probably two or 3,000 times a day. Easy. Every three to five minutes, flip the meat. For eight to 10 hours. Who said it was easy? Everybody uses pork. Some people use a bone in, some people don't. The cuts of meat that we use here is a CT butt, which means close trim. As you can see, there's not any hardly fat or anything. It's more marble than it is anything. U.S. barbecue is different by region. Everybody's got their own take of it. Um, down south, it's more of a, a vinegar base. Uh, up north, the further you go north, it gets a sweeter sauce. I eat it every day, breakfast, lunch. And then if sometimes I'll take it home for dinner, it just depends, but definitely breakfast and lunch. Well, when the pandemic hit here, uh, a lot of businesses froze. I mean, they had to lay off their servers. They couldn't open the restaurants. They couldn't do anything. Um, we were fortunate enough to have a drive through Because we couldn't have anybody in our restaurant, we got them through the drive through The best thing we could do is try to give people food because we knew Everything in the town was fixing to close down and shut down, except for essential workers. I think barbecue is a comfort food just because it reminds you of being in the, with your family on the weekend or your big gatherings. And uh, I mean, it's just a family thing. You know, it's something that you do when you get together on a Sunday afternoon. Let's go in the dump. Mochi is like Japanese mochi in a sense, but with oil. My grandma taught me how to do it by having glutinous rice flour and water and having the right ratio. Traditional foods are always using rice flour, glutinous rice flour. It's always like same, same but different. Ooh, GTG. This shape is what my ama teach me. Even though it looks like blood cells, but this is what my ama teach me before I learn bio. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I tried it once actually um, by doing it just flat like that and just putting it in and boil. But it doesn't get um, equally as soft faster. So my grandma teach me that, oh, um, the inside needs to be small, uh, thinner than the outside. So it, to me, it looks like a red blood cell. Nah. It kind of looks kind of cute. Lah. It will get fat later. I will cook it until the texture seems fit. So last time, right, um, when I was a kid, uh, I always walked into the kitchen, then I see my grandma holding a stick and doing this. I was like, whoa, what is this, you know, like, why is this so cool? And then, then I was like, oh, I want to teach me. Afterwards, I got really intrigued. Because it's so sticky, right, you cannot use a mixer, 
because there's too much surface area contact. But this is thin, so you're like jabbing it. It's like, you know, working with a mochi, like Japan, you're like, huh, 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 huh. you know, like that. Shallot, fried shallots. To get that flavour in. Yeah, then it's really tough because it's like a lot of resistance training, I would say. This is a leg pull. This, this is a shoulder, shoulder raises. Yeah, so now you can see it's like one lump already, right? So that's why I start to add oil. It's always been my only way that I know how to make mochi. I don't know any other way. <laughs> now I am taking out the peanut skin because the peanut skin is actually really, really thin and very dry and it also gets stuck on your throat. My grandma passed on my last year of uni. It affected me a lot. My final year, I decided to... I want to do something that's related to my grandma, to basically champion what she's taught me all my life. I created this brand, Amas Legacy. Uh, at that point of time, it was basically a workshop-based brand, which is basically teaching the young how to make kueis, you know, and like basically whatever my, my grandma has taught me. So it was this, you know, table of everybody sitting down together and like learning from each other. and. Quote unquote, I'm the ama lah. Yeah. So I'm like embodying my grandma and like teaching. But because of the pandemic, I wasn't able to do workshops and I was not really willing to do Zoom workshops because that defeats the whole purpose. Instead, I decided to champion this legacy by selling so that if one day I decided to do workshops, people would be like, okay, I've tried her food before. I really like it. I would like to learn it. Yeah. So that's, that's how the pandemic actually affected me. Traditionally, uh, mochi is actually used with peanuts, but um, I like to make it more interesting, so I have pistachios for the more curious individuals. Mm, so when it comes to traditional food, I feel that there's always a need to pay homage to it. There's always going to be an original flavour. I think I will always have a peanut sesame because it's going to tuck in the heartstrings for people. But I want to inspire change, so that's where the pistachio comes in. Mochi is not just about peanut and sesame, you can do way more than just that. Mm. That's soft, supple, salty, sweet pistachio. Chewan 每一个武汉人是同年起就吃热干面这个东西然后是同年的味道然后之前封城几个月没有吃到了所以解封之后我就来到这里吃了一碗热干面吃到那碗热干面的时候觉得香还是很香但是真的说是那种恢复如常的感
们中国人这个一年中最重要的一个节日，就是春节嘛。除夕晚上的这个聚餐也是非常重要的一个组成部分。对我们年夜饭是我爸煮勺做黄皮三鲜，是我们这边的一个特色菜。这个家里就是我做，就是我做这个菜。做这个菜呢，就当时呢就特别有寄托吧，就是说希望啊，借这个美好的它这个菜的寓意啊。大家都能够这个度过这个灾难，是吧？这个新冠的这个灾难，大家一家人呐、啊、都是平平安安、长长久久、圆圆满满的啊，能够活下来啊。这个黄皮三鲜是武汉市附近有个叫黄皮县的，它这个特产，就是鱼圆子、肉圆子、肉糕。鱼嘛，就是年年有余；圆子嘛，就是团团圆圆；这个高嘛，就是步步高升。它就是一个吉祥喜庆的这个意思。I tell everybody that comes in here, you know, I was born back there on that kitchen floor, and I'm gonna die right here on this floor. <laughs> It wasn't true. I'm just saying. I tell them I'm gonna die out here in this one. <laughs> Do you sir? Yeah, I actually started when I was about eight years old, sitting on the counter at the edge of it, and I would ring orders up and give change to people. Started cooking when I was 16 years old on my first summer vacation. Full-time cook at 18 when I graduated. So I've been cooking for 27 years or 23 years, somewhere around there, every day. So I love it though. I mean, like I said, it, it's, it's easy to me. It's like second hand. So this process you see me do, and I do every three to five minutes. Sometimes I'll go from one end to the other, and I have to continue and start over again if the fire is too hot. But yeah, this is a constant process for eight hours a day, six days a week non-stop. Everybody in this place in this world has a purpose and whether it be cooking food or talking to somebody to help them through a problem or fixing their car, every single person has their own reasoning for being here and if mine's to make somebody's stomach feel good and make them feel good about themselves or you know that's the main thing to make it sure everybody's happy. Well if you're doing barbecue at home you better have plenty of patience because it's not just throwing it on a grill and closing a lid and sitting there drinking you four or five beers. It doesn't work like that. Be consistent with what you do. You gotta keep it wet, you gotta keep it flipped. You gotta keep an eye on it, just like your baby. Yeah. So this is the, the end result that you get with the ribs after they've been smoking. This is a finished product. Uh, they've been cooking for about six hours now. Okay, what would you like? I want a uh, bite-sized sandwich, extra toasted, eight-ounce soup. With our barbecue, the main side dish is barbecue slaw. It's just a cabbage with our barbecue sauce mixed together. Our main side order is our Brunswick stew. It's a homemade stew that we make with chicken, beef, corn, and potatoes. That's been our main go-to side order. Some folks like Brunswick stew. Northerner folks don't know what Brunswick stew is, so Southerners, you know, we don't know a lot of the Northern stuff, so it's, it's pretty interesting, the diversity. It's diversity all the way around, but pork is pork, but mine still is better. Hey guys, so the orders will be up in the next five minutes, so do head down to the link below, and you can click on our Arma Legacy pre-order page, and you can see the orders for our flash sale today. Go get it now! <laughs> ah, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so stressful. Especially nowadays when um, the consumers are all online. Some people turn to Instagram because they get to do videos, they get to do um, photos. And because it is archived here, right? And then there's like, you know, people take photo, like IG video, oh, I received my food. So you can get reviews also, and it's very easy to repost them because people tag you. For me, I got most of my media coverage from online. 
One thing I've learned is that the image is equally as important as the food. If your image does not make your mouth water, if it does not make you feel like, oh, my stomach is hungry, I want to eat it immediately, it may not be such a good image because even though your food is really, really good, your image does not make people feel hungry and therefore, your, your, maybe somebody will not actually click on it. I think mati by itself is actually quite a boring thing to look at because it's just a blob with coated in some nuts and stuff like that. I kind of want to do shots that elevates the idea of it being stretchy, sticky, um, chewy and also maybe showcasing it more like a high tea style, you know. I think copy is really, really important. Just telling people, buy now! People will just go, oh, buy for what? Nowadays, people are spending more time on social media, right? It's possible that your first few captions, your first few lines, people will actually want to read more about it. What I can say is I write the truth lah, and I write, you know, like what I feel about my food. I came to work every single day through the whole pandemic. And believe it or not, we were so busy. We had a line for four hours at our drive through It never stopped all day long. I had to call them back in and pretty much ask them to help me work through the, the pandemic. And they've been here pretty much every day with me, working four or five hours a day. And we've made it this long and we're gonna keep pushing as long as we can. Yeah, my parents being here is the reason that we're still running. Yeah, we take it day to day, but it's, it's just a little difficult, but it's just part of the business. A lot of trials in different areas, and this is just another one of them. So. Sundays are, are stressful, yeah. but with family, you always know you're going to forgive each other for what you've said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the best way to enjoy barbecue is just to be messy with it. I mean, use your fingers, pick it up with your fork. There's napkins. You can use your sleeve. We don't really care what you do, as long as you enjoy it. My step-grandfather started Smokey Pig back in 1953. He had four or five picnic tables. That's all he had. And then we moved to this location in 71 or 72. And uh, it was my grandmother and my dad. My dad started when he was 10 or 11 years old also. People's parents have eaten here, grandparents have eaten here. It's just a tradition for a lot of Columbus people. Well, I was setting up my practice and I was talking to my banker and he said, let's go get barbecue. And I said, it suits me, and we've been having barbecue here ever since. That was in 1976. <laughs> Bikao 我们平平安安的在这样的情况下
If the recipe calls for sweet potato, it doesn't mean you treat them the same way. It's an orange sweet potato, it's a lot wetter, and it is a purple sweet potato, and it's a lot drier. On the Ang Ku Kueh, is that the orange sweet potato doesn't require any other liquids to add on. However, the purple sweet potato requires a bit of oil and a bit of water to ensure that it creates a very smooth, supple skin. So, the two kinds of Ang Ku Kueh we're making today is peanut and yam. Again, the potato is very wet, so I actually need more glutinous rice flour than the rest. Uh. It's really till the texture seems right. The orange sweet potato is slightly sticky and it holds itself together without sticking onto your hands. But for the purple sweet potato, because it's a lot drier, you need lesser flour. And the texture on your hands is also definitely a lot different. Uh. The purple one feels like, like a bit like sand at one point of time and requires more kneading. Most ang ku kueh is from outside that you can tell it's kind of artificial because it's really really bright like neon red. Those are normally food colouring because their base is not sweet potato, their base is just glutinous rice flour and water which is basically white. It's white colour. For me, I choose to use the natural colours of the potatoes because I think that it by itself is actually quite pretty already. Even though it's called ang ku kueh, there's no need for it to be you know, super duper red colour. So, uh, I've been doing this for more than a year. A lot of um, our generation, my generation, they don't really know much about traditional kueh. They don't really know about like the meaning and why and also the effort needed to do it. I would like to bring Singaporeans, like especially our generation out where we are so woke and stuff, to the same level of Japan where they can celebrate traditional food and they go like, okay, I want to join and learn this because it's, it's traditional food. Yeah, and I don't mind the effort. Thank you.